Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Policy, talking about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the self-titled debut album from Ghost Culture. So one of my goals this year is to be open to trying and embracing new genres of music. As much as I look back on my last year-end list with some degree of pride, I do feel that there are certain genres that I haven't quite delved into as deeply as I'd prefer. And while this does mean that there is definitely a requirement to explore more deeply into the rougher subgenres of metal, and really I'm on the cusp of this anyway, or the murkier sides of post-rock, a larger part of this will involve continuing my journey into electronic music. Last year was very exploratory for me. I learned a lot, be it the evolving mechanical sounds of Object, the warped melodies of Arca, the high concept jazzy feel of Flying Lotus, or the retro charm of Apex Twin. I found a lot to really like last year. It was a good year for me in exploring more electronic music. As such, in the doldrums of early January, when I heard about the self-titled debut from Ghost Culture, I was immediately intrigued, especially by the comparisons to Andy Stott, whose album I unfortunately missed last year, and especially Todd Turia, whose record I thought was all sorts of cheesy, yet very moving fun. And considering we're in early January here, and I desperately need to wash the taste of Ray Schremer out of my mouth, I figured, eh, what the hell, and I gave his debut album, his self-titled debut, a couple of lessons. What do we get here? Well, it's an interesting lesson, I'd say that for sure. And while I'm not quite sure I love the self-titled album from Ghost Culture, it definitely stands out as having a unique instrumental character among a lot of its peers. It's also one of the trickier albums to decipher that I've tackled recently, with no lyrics available anywhere online, and his partially muffled voice making the album feel all the more enigmatic. Hold on folks, we're gonna go in deep for this one, but if you want a recommendation out of the gate, yeah. You're going to want to hear this. Now, the first thing that becomes apparent when listening through Ghost Culture is instrumentally, it's towing a very interesting line. Layers of glistening, precisely synchronized melodies that interweave with the crisp, tight beats and blubbery bass lines. And yet, for as much as the mix bubbles around, there's still a real chill that comes through in the chiptune flourishes and a cavernous analog mix. It's clear that there's plenty of texture in the hazy cymbals, tightly regimented bass lines, and echoing waves of shimmering keyboards. But there's a richness to the atmosphere of this record. Not quite analog warmth, but a fullness that reflects a producer with a sharp eye for organic sound that comes through as surprisingly elegant. And while so much of this album is very languid, with very impressive poise, the percussion is surprisingly sharp, almost to the point of becoming too prominent in the mix at a couple places, and having too crisp of an edge to really match up with the mellow feel, especially as the synths are woven in with walls that alternate between being very sharply prominent and that understated vintage lo-fi. And yet there are moments here with some real intensity towards the more laid-back feel, the midpoint crescendo of mouth, the distant glaze and the synths on Guideca that thickens impressively before a midpoint pause with these beautiful swelling moments, the washed out melody on arms where the beat becomes very stuttered and shockingly tense, the ragged lo-fi unease of lying with moments of whirling hazy chiptunes, and those jittery melodies on Lucky reminded me of some of Arca's best material with a little bit more of a firmer beat backbone. And yet, Ghost Culture also takes his lo-fi moments into richer sonic tapestries. With the album closes the fog, that reminds me of a slightly more refined and spacious Aerial Pink track. And then there's my favorite track on this album by a mile, Glaciers. A gorgeous, chilled out waltz that's both mournful and yet very subtly touching in a very quiet way. Beautiful song. And a large part of this comes back to Ghost Culture's voice. Some critics have drawn parallels with Dave Gone of Depeche Mode, but there's more subtlety here. Not so much curt and aggressive, and yet more self-assured and balanced, with a natural poise that's impossible to fake, and yet desperately needed on an album that feels this smooth. You need somebody with this much poise and presence. His vocal tracks are often very well mixed into his tracks. Often a little bit too well mixed, honestly, because if I were to have a complaint about this album, it'd be that the vocals are often a little bit difficult to really parse out. His slow, not quite methodical delivery and layers of synth and fuzz often make the vocals a little bit tricky to really hear, especially without any lyrics published anywhere on the internet for real reference here. And I gotta admit, that's a little bit frustrating because there's a lot about these lyrics that I really do like. Fitting in with the washed out, hazy atmosphere, lyrics are often kind of simple, but oblique and abstract, and yet they do paint a very interesting picture. The most striking lyric on the entire album comes in the second song, Guideca. How strange, 
I'm satisfied. It's a distinctly odd shift from the neuroses that often rack the dark wave and chill wave from which this album draws a lot of influence. And yet, it's not sex hungry or hunting for that wild time on the dance floor either. Instead, if we're looking for a common emotional element for this album's protagonist, it'd be an uncanny self-assuredness. Whether he's under pressure or required to lie, or possessing secrets and answers from others that they might crave, or simply able to just detach from the calamities that would crush other people, he's got himself very much under control. You don't typically hear that. And there's self-awareness that comes with it. Arms reflects his desire for things that they don't change in preferring that stasis. And Glass shows how his coldness insulating him from pain and human contact and how he might somewhat regret that. And yet it's here we need to talk about this album's themes. Ghost Culture himself has described his name and this album in particular as a metaphor for superficiality through obsession with technology. And with all that, this album snaps into very sharp focus. Sure, there's a certain satisfaction and insulation that comes through technology and being able to isolate oneself through it, using it as a barrier from the harsher pains of the human experience, something which Glaciers makes incredibly clear, showing how others are crushed by implacable forces beyond their control and it's how it's so easy not to care. How easy it is to lie and how one can parlay those lies into seemingly incredible luck. And from framing himself on the inside, he shows just how seductive and comfortable that place can be. And yet, as the album progresses, the album's point of view shifts away from that insulating comfort to the outside point of view, recasting the confidence of his lies into something much shakier on the track line. His hunt for answers and fulfillment that goes unanswered. And with the song The Fog, the safety net is suddenly yanked away to show the constant consequences of getting lost in the fog of superficiality and losing one's humanity in the process. It's a neat framing trick and showing that parallel and does capture a fully nuanced perspective for both sides here. Although I do feel the album might have been better served by sticking with one point of view all the way through, preferably from the inside. As it is, he never really gives up his position of comfort, starting off insulated and having that seductive feel, reaping all the benefits, and then just turning away to criticize his old degree of protection. And it can read it as a a little bit condescending, having his cake and then eating it too. And yet, with all that, I have to admit, I really did like the self-titled debut from Ghost Culture. It's not a perfect album. At points it feels a little bit long, especially in the longer digression, the back half of Answer, or the many moments of repetition on Lucky that probably could have trimmed back a little bit. And I do feel this record might have benefited from being at least a shade with a little bit more intensity, or even with more of a spacious, frozen sound. But you know what? As it is, I'm feeling a very strong 7 out of 10, and definitely recommendation. If you're looking for some thought-provoking, intelligent electronic music that's melodic and beautifully textured definitely give ghost culture a major listen you won't regret it so yeah thanks a lot for watching if you'd like to like and subscribe i'd be more than grateful if there's anything else i might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out this year that you want me to take a look at i'm more than happy to give them a listen until then i'm mark you're watching spectrum pulse and i'll see you next time